no time for an intro today. Straight into the shop we go. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to continue on welding up the floor panel for our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso camper conversion. I'm adding two more pieces of 2x2 aluminum box tube to divide the floor into three sections. These box tubes will help add rigidity to the floor structure, which will be important when the camper is lifted off the truck bed. After tacking each box tube in place, I'll stand up the frame and start the fillet weld. Now, a good, well-practiced TIG welder with a powerful machine could perform these welds in any position, but I'm pushing the limits of my machine and my skills, so I'm choosing to weld everything I can in the flat position. With the first four welds done, I need to flip the frame again to get at the opposite side. The more of these welds I do, the better I'm getting at not hitting the tungsten. Now, that doesn't mean I don't hit the tungsten, as you can see right about there. I would say this weld is at the lower limit of having enough heat, but it's all my machine's got. You'll notice I'm still using the thumb switch and not the foot pedal because I'm just running at max power all the time. To compensate for this, my welds have to start very slowly and then get very quick at the end so I don't overheat at the end of the weld. For those not familiar with welding, the helmet that I'm using is what's known as a speed glass. You can see through it clearly until you strike an arc, at which point the shade darkens so you don't blind yourself from your own welding. Ooh, whoops, got that tungsten a little close again. Despite what one might think, TIG welding can actually be quite relaxing. Once you get into the groove, get into the zone, everything else just kind of disappears. Now I've got to lay the frame down flat and grind off the first tack welds that I put in place. Notice I'm still squaring the frame up with the marks I have on the floor. After I've ground these tacks back off again, I can take my skill saw and back chip it to make a groove for the last weld on this side. Flipping the frame over again, repeating the same, squaring it up, grinding off the tacks, back chipping and doing four final welds and I better hurry this up because it sounds like I'm about to run out of the music track. Done. So now that I've got all these center pieces TIG welded in all the way around, everything on this frame is 100% solid and that's all I've got to weld on this frame. But don't worry, this video is longer because behind me, you've probably seen floor pans sitting on the back of the Fuso. Now, I haven't shown you yet how these were made, so let's take a quick peek at how these came to get here. This is a super duper high tech, super powerful, super big, super duper plasma cutting machine that I may have had some after hour access to at WORK. 
Now while I may have just been cutting some rectangles I could have cut with my saw, it takes so much work out of it. This would have taken me hours to cut by hand. You can also see I'm cutting a couple of long skinnies. Those will come into play later. Look at the heat warping this part as it gets cut. That's just insane. Now I may also have had access to a super high tech, super powerful, super big, super duper press break at WORK. These are just simple 90 degree bends, but they're longer than what I can do in my press break at home. So that's where the floor pans came from, but now let's look at how they're gonna go together. So as you can see, I've got right now sitting on the deck, three floor pans. And these three floor pans will fit into the three spaces in the frame that I created out of the box tube. Now these pieces of box tube that are sitting here, and here are just simulating the frame so I get the spacing right. As you can see, these pans are not full length and that is because the press brake that was being used to bend these is not capable of bending 14 foot long pieces of aluminum. So before I can press these into the floor pan, or sorry, before I can press these floor pans into the floor frame, I need to weld the sections together to end up with a full length pan that will drop in. And you may also be wondering why the box tube that is here ends at the same spot as the floor pan and on the corners you may have noticed down here I left the end open and that's on the side and that is because that is where a jack will go in to be able to lift the entire camper structure off. The front and back corners are not mitered on purpose so that I can get that jack in the hole and have a purchase to lift. Well, all that really means is I've got a whole bunch more welding to do, but I've run into a bit of a problem that happens fairly frequently to welders, and that is this gauge reads zero, no more welding gas, no more welding. So out comes the teeny tiny argon bottle with a trip back to the welding supply store, and that'll give me a minute or two to think. What have I forgotten? Actually, before I move on to the step of pressing the floor pans into the frame, there is one thing that I do need to do. And it's nice that this is a slow build in some ways because it gives me time in between the jobs that I'm doing to think about things that I might have missed or things that I want to change. So one of the things that I realized I haven't done that I do want to do is insert some sections of pipe into the frame as a second mounting point for these legs. So what I need to do now before I press the pans in the floor is cut some sections of pipe and weld them in. So yep, more welding. Oh no, it's happening again. Everything is slowed down to build speed. Does anybody else notice the lights flickering? I think that's the LEDs, I should fix that. Anyway, This horizontal bandsaw is amazing. It's one of my favorite tools. It is so much quieter and less messy than a chop saw. It doesn't smell with the carbide abrasives and it gives a nice clean cut. A quick touch on the end of the pipe after it's cut to clean off the last little bit of the burr from the saw. And I'll also be cleaning the edge of the pipe because aluminum really likes to be clean when it's welded. Woo, these are slippery buggers. So this outer edge that I'm cleaning is just where it's going to interface with the box tube on the outer face and it really makes it easier to get a weld going when you get rid of the exterior sort of coating that's on, whoops, there it goes again, uh, get rid of the exterior coating on the aluminum. It's hard to burn through that with the welder. Now that I've got these four pieces of pipe cut and cleaned up, ready to go, I've got to drill four holes into the box tube so that I can weld them in. Sure feels like I'm always lifting this up, flipping it over, dragging it around. Hopefully soon that'll stop. I'm welding in the pipe about a foot in from the edge and right on the center line. The clearance between the edge of the hole saw and the inner edge of the box tube is almost nothing, so it's pretty important to get this in the right spot. Oh no, not again. Here we go slow-mo. Well, it's things like this that make this build go so slowly. This hole saw is completely toast. I don't know what I was doing with it last time, but all the teeth are bent inwards and it's not cutting very well. To add to the fun, it seems to have backed the arbor pins out. So now it is completely stuck between the hole saw and the arbor. So 
I'm gonna have to stick it in the vise in order to put the new hole saw on. Actually, that came apart pretty easily. So if you've got the type of hole saw arbor that has the pins that slide straight out, you may find that often that happens while you're cutting because these vibrate a little bit. And when that happens, then it over tightens the hole saw on the arbor and it makes it impossible to take apart afterwards. So if you have that problem, a little tip you can do is grab a chunk of electrical tape, pick your favorite color, and just do a really tight wrap around the arbor and the slide. It's easy to take apart afterwards, wraps around the top a little bit, and it's gonna stop that from coming out. So the idea behind the legs is to support the camper when it's not on the truck or to be able to lift it on and off the truck. The main support leg will go in here and then it will have a side leg that comes out that's triangulated back so that we can have strength to not rotate on here. On the back, there will be another leg going this way. It's just gonna have a bolt back here. So that should give us a couple of different axes of stabilization so the legs don't fall off. Now the idea is that this piece of pipe is gonna be inserted from the outside with a weld around the outside and a couple of spots where I drill through just to attach it on the in inboard edge so that it can't twist inside the frame. The outside diameter of this pipe is almost the same as the inside diameter of the box tube, so I don't expect it to do that anyway, but just as a little bit of safety precaution. So when I slide the pipe in from the outside, I've left it so that there's a little bit of a lip sticking out. And that's because after this box tube frame is assembled, there's going to be another piece of plate that goes on the outside. And that's gonna be about an eighth of an inch thick, which is the same as the box tube. And that means I'll end up with the pipe being flush with the outside, so I can do a weld around like that. So I've got the pipe in place, pushed in with a clamp. You can see the hole I've made at the top for a plug weld. And I've also made a little one on the back. We'll see how this goes. Fresh gas. Welding a small plug weld like this is actually quite difficult for me. I'm trying to get the heat down to the bottom of the hole so I can hit the pipe, but the hole is so small it's very hard to get the tungsten and the arc and the filler rod all in at the same time and the heat all the way down to the bottom. But it seems to be working. I may have to do it in multiple stages because again, I'm using the thumb switch, not the foot pedal, so controlling the heat, I can only stop and start. The hole on the back is even smaller and therefore even more difficult and I don't know that this is something that's actually going to be helping too much. Again, the only method I have to control the heat with the thumb switch is to stop and start so when things get too hot, I simply stop and then start again. There we go, first pipe is welded in. Got the tack on the top and the one on the back. I'm not really sure that the one on the back is actually worth doing. It's uh, not really getting that much contact, but the one on the top should hold it. And the outside is ready to have the next layer slotted over top and welded to the pipe. Now, originally I was just gonna weld the pipe to the outer layer, but I couldn't leave it. I, I had to weld it to the inside edge of the box tube as well. So this will end up as a double weld. It'll be welded both to the box tube as well as to the plate that gets welded to the outside. That may come back to haunt me because I'm going to need quite a bit more power in order to be able to melt through the two layers and still have enough heat to get a puddle. Ooh, that gets hot on the fingers when you get that close. Well, it's definitely not perfect, but I've got two pipes welded in place. One here, and one down at the other end. Now I gotta flip the whole thing over and do it again. Second side done. Another pipe welded here. Not looking too shabby. And number two way back here. Oh, there's a stool there. There we go. I know it might not seem like I've been getting a lot done, but this has in fact taken me quite a while. Filming takes a lot of time. For example, welding the first two took me all morning. Welding the second two where I did no filming took me about 40 minutes. So that is all I have for this video. Come back next time. I will be putting the floor pans in and moving along with more construction of the floor and exoskeleton. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.